And I'll be honest with you, I like Blaze Blue even less <laughs> than Under Night and Birth for the webcam. I just I put it right here. It's basically right in between the meter. It's I, as far as I can tell, it's not blocking anything. Like it might block people's feet occasionally. But that's okay, we'll live with that. Because if I put it up in the corner, it's gonna block. I mean, it's gonna block anything that happens in the corner. Because there's a lot of stuff that happens over. Like, even the characters themselves will sometimes block out the overdrive meter, they'll block out their health bars, their profiles, all that stuff. Like, there, there's a lot of action that happens there. So, hopefully, hopefully this will work out well. Anyway, uh, as per usual, timestamps on the bottom if you were not interested in this Azrael versus a New 13. I hate this color, because whenever I see this color, I think it's Moo. Obviously it isn't, but this is Moo's color scheme. I mean, obviously she's very different too. The legs are different, the Gundam wings, whatever the hell you want to call them, the blades, they're different. But it's just, you know, at a casual glance, the color scheme is the same. Yeah, bad. He didn't respect the instant block. Oh, that projectile actually just straight up disappeared. Does that have if you hold it too long, does that happen? It just goes away? Oh, never let people- that's still- I can't believe people still get away with that. Eh, I kinda can. Because obviously, uh, if, if- I mean, if you're not aware, 2C into either 6D or 3D has a very significant gap in there, and pretty much any character can hit something and punish them. Usually it's a jab, but some characters can get an even better starter with a B move, sometimes even a C move. Tager can get a free 360, for instance. Um, but then there's still the concern. See, he's not respecting it. That she's instant blocked twice now, and he's trying to hit a button afterwards, and you, you don't get to do that. If somebody instant blocks Gustav, your turn's over. You don't get to play anymore. And I don't understand why. I mean, you would think an Asriel player would, you know, recognize that, given that it's one of the most important aspects of his offense. I think he thought Growler right there was going to continue absorbing projectiles. And he was going to be okay. Ooh, he actually, if he had thrown out a normal, he would have stuck her in the air. And I think she stopped holding barrier right around the time a normal would have come out. Doesn't matter, still took it. I just spoiled everything. Hopefully, I mean, it was too fast for people. I don't even... I did, I think I saw a lot of wins on the left column. Like six or so in a row. But we'll see. Why did I even doubt on this one? I just pretend 9's not in the game. That would make me a lot happier, to just live my own life and pretend 9 isn't in the game. If I ever run into her online, then we just, you know, run away, we rage quit, and we remake a lobby, or we, you know, go wherever. We just pretend it never happened. We see a replay of it, we just, we don't care what the ranks are, we bypass it, we leave. God, this game was so good back in Chrono Phantasm, and it's just been straight downhill ever since. Extend ruined it all! Then they decided OD Raid needed to be a thing, they decided Exceed Excel needed to be a thing, Active Flow needed to be a thing, Nine is a Nami, Susano needed to be a Susano, needed to be a thing that got buffed in 2.0. And now you look at online replays and like 50% of them are goddamn Susano. <laughs> Ooh, good DP. No respect whatsoever. And sometimes that's how you gotta do. At least he got the punish there. That's still, that dash is just so dumb. Like, they even nerfed it and it's still dumb. And this is coming from somebody who uses Asriel, who already has a really dumb back dash. And even it's not that dumb. <laughs> Does her forward dash have the same invulnerability as her back dash, actually? I'm not sure on that. But I mean, obviously, she's just forward dashing through everything without a care in the world. So the invulnerability has to start up decently soon. Ooh, I was expecting an air grab there. I'm surprised he didn't go for it. Because he would have been able to get the corner off of that. I think he might have actually been able to dash under and get the... Goddamn. Get the corner anyway. Uh, if he had hit confirm that properly. But obviously he didn't. He didn't even get anything off of it, unfortunately. Which is a damn unfortunate thing to happen when you land a counter hit C move. First bait, maybe? Attempted reversal bait? I don't know, but he just literally lost the match because of it, so... 
And he got Astral because of it, so good job, dude. Apparently, I've, I've just, I don't really pay attention to 9 very often, but apparently 9 is Shadow Labyrinth now. I mean, with just a very, very quick glance, it almost looks like they just ripped Shadow Labyrinth's <laughs> Persona straight off and just implemented it in this game. Which, honestly, I wouldn't put it past Team Blue. They've done it before. Azrael has, like, three or four of Kanji's normals from Persona 4 Arena. His, uh, 3C, Sentinel Dump, is the same animation as Kanji's little chair stomp thing. Chair stomp? Chair smash? There was one other one, too. There was another jumping normal. Oh, it's JD. There's probably more, but those are the ones that I can think of off the top of my head. I think that was too far away for 2C. I believe. But I don't think it was far enough away to not go for it. Just, just like the... If he whips it, so what? He recovers in time, you still get advantage, you still get to run your mix-up, whatever. If it lands, you get a weak point, and you get even better advantage and Oki. So, I don't know. Should have just gone for it, really. This is surprisingly patient between these two characters. That was a perfect opportunity to roll under and get the corner. See, so basically do that, but not raw in the middle of a block string and get potentially punished. I'm, so, I'm very surprised. Like, the things that I'm seeing a lot of these people get away with, I'm very surprised they're getting away with them. But that, I mean, obviously that's coming from a place like being, watching, see, watching, just watching, not playing, not being worried about anything that's actually happening, not having to be concerned about reacting to things. It's so much easier to see than when you're playing. Oh, I was kind of, I don't think I've seen that before, to be honest. Did he pop? I think that was level two. Like, I'm paying attention to the screen. I'm obviously not paying attention to the meters. But yeah, I think that was uh, just a level two charge in order to get that to work. That was kind of cool. Azrael needs to super jump more often, because then he would be getting J2D. That was actually really good. That was all burst. I don't think he's going to die, though. I was fucked up. <laughs> I, I, I thought he was too far away to be able to follow that up in that manner, but he got him, so good on him. But that was burst safe. Because he did the Phalanx Cannon, uh, she was always out of range for the burst to hit. So if she had bursted, he would have been able to react to that for free and punish it. So that was a really good move by that Asriel. And honestly, that's another thing. I don't, I've never seen an Asriel do that before, and that was really smart. This poor Talkaka is fucked now. Okay, never mind. Why would you... Like, out of anything you can do... Out of all the things you can do, you do 6B, which has literally no chance of... Like, Taokaka has so many options there, right? She can backdash, she can just jump, she can use her dry moves to escape into the air, which I believe she... I can't believe that wasn't a fatal. Uh, I believe she did use a dry move... Dry? A drive move to get into the air right there. Out of every option Taokaka possibly has, 6B does nothing to any of them. Even if she just stood there, 6B does nothing. Actually, I take that back. If she threw out her 3C, that move right there, 6B would hit it. But why would you ever do that? <laughs> well, that was a 360. Oh my god! I don't think he's dead, though. Oh, it doesn't block those slow ass overhead. Uh, that's a bummer. That used to do more damage, right? I mean, it's Taokaka. Everything used to do more damage. But I feel like when you got hit by that, it used to do, like, 3,600. I don't know. Maybe that was just back in the glory days of uh, CS. I, I don't know. Yeah, 360B is actually not a terrible anti-air. It's definitely not one you want to rely on. That should never happen if you're a Taokaka. 
<laughs> that should never happen if you're Talkaka. Don't use Gadget Finger against Talkaka! She has so many escapes, and, like, you're not gonna guess correctly. I think the drive is actually probably almost 100% safe. It's probably her best option. I'm trying to think, like, I believe even Magnetize, she would dodge an attempted Atomic Collider there. No normals are gonna touch her from that distance, so you don't have to worry about any of those. Oh my god, oh my god, this is so sloppy! That was supposed to be a reaction to Spark Bolt, but I'll take it anyway. Please, Lance. Oh my Taukaka! Come on! Oh my god! You have like 30 minutes <laughs> to determine when you need to do something that would allow you to get that kill, and she's dropped it twice! What the hell?! Don't use gadgets. Stop! Any Tager, any Tager that uses Gadget Finger when you already have Magnetism needs to stop doing that. It's just not worth it. Like, I'm even starting to get to the opinion where I used to be of the opinion that you should never use Gadget Finger if you have Magnetism unless it's against one of the characters where you can link a 5A after the Gadget Finger. And then it's worth it. Now, after having, you know, gotten more experience and seen, you know, as much as I can see, in regard to Tager as a character, I don't even think that's worth it the majority of the time. Against certain characters, I would, like, against really big characters, Susano, Tager himself, good shit, finally put it all together. Um, like, the, you know, the bigger, fatter characters, I would say it's 100% worth to go for that, because then you can actually, like, 5A them and then throw out normals afterwards, put them into a guaranteed block string that gets you a guaranteed mix-up, and there's nothing they can do about it. But there are certain characters, like Rachel, for instance, she gets hit by it. Uh, Jubei is another one. I mean, there's a bunch, I think, doesn't Ragna? I think Ragna gets hit by that. Anyway, bang. There's a bunch of characters that get hit by it, but then afterwards you don't really have any good options. Even, like, if they're magnetized, you can basically just do 5A, 4D, and then you can run a mix-up off of that, which isn't terrible, but it's not, I mean, you get better if you just go for a safe jump. Um, you can go for 5A, 6A which works. Technically, you could go for 5A 360B, but that's slow and reactable, and everybody's just going to be waiting to see what you do. Like, 360B is just not fast enough. It is, if somebody is accustomed to the Tager matchup, it is reactable and jumpable 100% of the time. So, really, the only time you're going to land it, you're going to catch anybody. Why am I watching S vs. Amane? The only time you're actually going to catch somebody with that is if uh, they're basically in the middle of a normal and the invulnerability gets through it and then you grab them. Ooh, okay. Recovers very quickly from that. This poor S, yeah. I doesn't even really know the matchup very well. I have something in my eye and that pisses me off. And I always have something in my eye. Fucking contacts. Ah. I'm starting to get to that point now, though. Where I'm kind of wondering if contacts are worth I know I'm getting a bit off topic here. But it's like, I'm constantly throwing chemicals in my eyes. I'm not a chemist. I don't take chemistry. I don't know the purpose of any of these things that they make the solution with. What if that is, like, in the long run, going to just blow up my eyes? They're going to liquefy at some point in time inside of my skull. Or it's giving me brain cancer. I already have brain cancer. I play Blaze Blue. But still, this, this kind of stuff, I've been kind of like, should I start Googling this? But then you Google it, and it's going to take you to WebMD, and it's going to tell me I already have cancer. I don't know. I'm feeling like I'm recognizing, so, because I went through, every time I do a replay theater, I go through the rankings really quickly. Um, and I grab as many replays as I can, and I feel like I'm seeing some repeats of names. Which is weird, because I haven't actually checked this in, like, five or six days? But I mean, all the anime games are kind of falling off right now. Everybody's just waiting. They're waiting for Dragon Ball Fighters. They're waiting for uh, Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle. Two people are waiting for Unist. <laughs> God damn it! Ooh, good answer, here. Gonna get a really good combo off that. I'm actually not sure how good the scaling is on 6B. That's not bad. I think if he, I think he could have done more off of that. I mean, like I said, I don't know the scaling of the proration, so I'm not 100% sure. 
but I think he could have reached 4k with a better combo. Nope. Online special. Dash through normal. Dash through into any of his special moves is unreactable. Dash through with a normal, that's reactable. Cross under. Oh, that bug barely whipped. Almost good blocky, but he got fuzzy. You're not gonna block that instant overhead. So dirty. That should be curse, and that's probably death. He's got a block now for like eight seconds. Check <laughs> good luck! Oh my god, that was three mix-ups. Was it three? I can't, I, no, he didn't throw out a normal, so that was just two mix-ups. But there was going to be more after that. And like an unreactable time frame, and he got hit by the first one. It's always so insane when you have characters like Eric Cooney when you're cursed, where he basically has hits that are guaranteed combos. Oh, that's a bummer. But they also serve as mix-ups. So it's just, it's odd, it's... What am I trying? What word am I trying to use? Auto something. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's basically flowchart, where it's like... No, it's not even flowchart, because with a flowchart, you kind of... You have to deviate from time to time based on what's happening. But it's like, with those hits when you're cursed, this either, ooh, this either serves as a mix-up, or... It's a full combo regardless. Like, you don't have to put any thought into it. You don't have to react to anything. It just works no matter what. And those kind of piss me off, to be honest. That's one of my biggest detractions from Guilty Gear in general. Is that so many characters have projectiles that last for so long. That it gives them the opportunity to not only throw out three or four mix-ups. But if you get hit by any of them, the ensuing mix-ups still combo and they still get a full confirm off of it. And that's just... There needs to be some sort of give in there, I feel. That sucks. He's, there's no way. He's not getting out of this. Yeah, that was a poor decision to begin with. But he should have just tried to sit and block until the Eric Coney committed to something. Because you want to make sure that... Because Eric Coney doesn't have particularly fast normals. So you can definitely see a normal coming out. Maybe not react to, you know, like, oh, this is a low, this is an overhead or whatever. But you can just react to the fact that there's motion of some sort and then throw out the alpha counter rather than... Just throwing it out the second you get you get put in block stun and hope. Because, I mean, obviously it didn't work right there because he just dashed through it. That looked weird. That was weird. That was even weirder. I hate this game's hurt boxes. So... Ooh. Does she get damage off of this? Of course not. It's Tsubaki. She's going to get like 3.5. No confirm either. Oh no, just got hit with the rock cross up. Is this why this dude gets wins? Like, I, I've seen so many of this guy's matches, and I feel like with the win rate he has, which is like 70 something percent, and obviously the rank that he has, and being the only Subaki in the world, I should be more impressed when I see it, but I never, I feel like I never actually see him do anything. And I see him screw up more often than not. See, like, that's cool. I like that. But this Mai is just getting hit by things, and I'm not sure why. Mai, by the way. She's a really skillful character that truly shows off your capabilities as a fighting game player. <laughs> God damn it. And you can't just let people roll out for- Okay, I guess you can just let them roll out for free if you're just gonna continue doing the cross-up. That didn't even combo. God damn, just fast-forward this. You know what? You don't even deserve- It didn't even combo. You don't even deserve to get this watched. Oh, I need- I need to give a short, uh... Not epitaph. Jesus Christ. I don't know why I can never- Think of this word, whatever. I need to give- We need to give a short consolation speech, I guess. Uh, this man, Toto, was the first Tager that ever made it. He's still a leader right now. The first Tager to ever- Or at least the first Tager that I saw. Maybe there were others. Um, that made it into the ranks of the words. And, uh, he's gone now. He's been knocked down to level 35. Feels bad. That's moved so good against Tager. Am 
Why didn't he go for... Oh, I guess he did have... Okay, that makes sense. He's paying more attention to where his meter thing is than I am. He already had the slot unlocked. Yeah, what is that? 2 one 4 a Something like that. A little kick. So good against Tager Beast. Tager's so fat. Like, a lot of characters can get kind of knocked out and pushed back from Susan those fat normals. Not Tager. He's too big. It's really good. And I'm actually not sure if he can sledge through it. Because he might just wind up, um, like, getting through the projectile. And then, I don't know if the foot itself has a hitbox. But if it does, like, he could very well just, you know, stomp through the projectile and then get kicked in the balls. You go for it? Nope. It's just, it really surprises me how many Tagers I see never use the 5A link. And it's just far and away superior to a raw gadget finger every time. They just don't do it. Woo! Good call out! He should have rapid cancelled that though. Um, he could have killed off of a rapid cancel. Because then he gets the full corner loop and the corner loop. Like, no matter what starter you get the corner loop from, you're doing a minimum 4k off of that. Off of a raw atomic collider, you're getting 5. 5.5, baby. It does stupid damage. The blocking hip, that's free. Anytime you block a D move, well, maybe not 5D, because you might get pushed back too far. But frame data wise, Susano is 100% punishable by a 360A after every single drive move. Oh, shut up, PlayStation. I've left the controller on all day long. It's a bad, I need to stop doing that. Like, I've taken to watching, um, now that I'm on Christmas break and I kind of have my mornings to. Ooh, you just got hit raw right there. Now that I kind of have my mornings more or less to myself, I've been going slowly but surely trudging through my steam library beginning to understand that every single game that i ever bought because it was like 80 percent off and only 99 cents was a mistake because they're all 99 cents for a reason <laughs> uh but i've been starting to go through them and you know kind of whittle it down to games that are worth playing and games that i can just shove aside and never think about again and uh so i just well, i will have like either netflix or a stream going on on my playstation while I do that, and I just leave the controller on the entire time, and I need to stop doing that. Alright, so this bullet has played a lot of matches now. I think they're almost up to a thousand, and they have maintained a 70% win rate. So, that's cool and all, but they're kind of fucked right now. <laughs> Unless this Arakuni keeps dropping things. He's gonna be able to run out the entire curse here. He's not doing anything at that. I am hungry. I don't have anything to eat today. I just realized that. That goes through it. All right. Okay. I thought for sure uh, something bad was about to happen right there. Something bad's about to happen right here. Oh, he didn't get the curse. I wonder if he just thought, no, maybe the cloud would catch up and she would get automatically cursed and he was maybe expecting the bugs to pick. I don't know exactly what he was expecting right there to drop it, but it doesn't matter because he just took the round. No respect, but that actually it makes sense against Arakuni because almost all Arakunis do that Dodge away and then throw out um, oh, I think he tried to roll you just can't do that against bullet That I need to learn the time. I don't know why I'm saying like I'm, I need to learn that like I'm gonna actually learn bullet I never will there are so many better characters that I can spend my time on and have far more fun with but that timing to do that is actually trickier than I thought it would be. This. You have to wait for them to bounce up a little bit before you throw out the 623C. Otherwise, uh, you throw them into the wall too low to follow it up afterwards. I couldn't quite figure out the timing for it. But obviously, if you want to be a good bullet player, that is 100% necessary because she doesn't really have... Or at least those... Using that leads to her optimal routes. Good 6B uh, in the corner that gets her double heat back. 
Could you imagine if they made JD the circle as wide as her 5D is? Would that be enough to make her a quality character? No. They need to revert the 5D changes. It's pure and simple. I don't know if a microphone is picking that up. But it sounds like somebody's trying to drill into a bank vault. <laughs> I don't have a bank vault though, so it's very confusing. <laughs> Why do you keep just dropping your winning combos? Finish it! Put poor Bullet out of her misery, man. How much time has it been? We got time for one more match. I'm going to find a good one. Oh, oh, it has Haas. That's the front runner so far. Um, let's see. Oh, these are here. We're starting to get into the ones. These are the ones that I just downloaded. Oh, it's been 11 days. Okay, there's no chance of overlap on those. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I think I'm going with the Makoto Bang. Yep, we're going with Makoto Bang. Bang's a surprisingly rare character still. I don't get it. I think Bang's very strong in this version of the game, but there's just. He just doesn't have much representation. I mean, I think this is the strongest Bang has ever been since Continuum Shift. That's so dirty, that's so good, that's so good! Oh man, the bumpers make him so flashy and I love it. Oh, he's doing her dirty! Makoto's getting done dirty! Oh no, that's a perfect! We're gonna have to do a second one because that round took like 15 seconds. <laughs> oh no! Okay, maybe she'll get a perfect this time. I wonder if that was a mistake? No, I mean, I can't really think of anything else he would have wanted to do. That was a weird decision. Just like the nerf to that projectile was also a very strange decision. Oh, this Makoto got some work to do. You definitely can't be throwing out. So, like, if, you, if a combo's blue beaded, you can't be throwing out moves that are unsafe like that. If they're not, if they're going to blue beat the combo, and you should know at that time that something's gonna get blue beaded. This is a bad look. I mistimed that though, so it wasn't quite as bad. One hit, she's dead. She's not getting her burst back. I mean, unless she gets the hit, she's not getting her burst back in this round. She's so scared. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go for another one because that match didn't take very long. Ah! Let's, let's throw a Jubei in there. Why not? Let's see Jubei get his ass kicked. <laughs> I have no faith in this character at all. Relius is another character. There's actually, like, there's so many characters that are so good in this game, but they're just not good enough. They're not S tier, and thus why even use them from a competitive standpoint, more or less, which is a damn shame. I mean, you do have some, like, perennial uh, representation of this character, like Moke Moke is one of them. I can't remember who the other one is, like Maki Faru or something, something like that. I believe also always uses Relius. That's a bad look. And he has no meter. He does have overdrive though. Doesn't matter, he just got out for free. Just let him out for free, that's something you can't really do if you're Relius, but he did it. The neck is stiff and I don't like it. I hate that feeling when like, I feel like I need to kind of crack my neck somewhat, but it just won't happen. Went on the wrong side. Ooh, okay, I I forgot he had that move to be honest. The command dash. Good with punish. Good counter hit. That's one really good thing about Jubei is if you land a counter hit on his aerial normals, you are guaranteed a really strong combo. Well, you're guaranteed a combo. Really strong is uh fairly incorrect because most of Jubei's combos, man, he did a perfect. Jubei trying to tell me to have some faith in this man. He's still working out the kinks. He's rusty, man. He's been out of the action for too long with that injury. But he's starting to come back a little bit, you know? He's trying to tell me. You're not done yet. You got some work left in those old limbs. 
Alright. Hope you enjoyed that scene. Now, oh, I can just show you real quick. Rest in pepperonis. To this man's leader rank. He's level 35. It was just destined to be. Tagger can't stay in the upper echelon of the rankings that long. It's a damn shame.